Well, it's the day before. Hello, my YouTube fans. Um, as you can see by the image on the screen, I wanted to make this a video about tomorrow's total solar eclipse. Uh, it's kind of a public service announcement or announcement. So, yes, tomorrow is the eclipse. Um, tomorrow being Monday, August 21st. Um, this is the warning that came with my telescope. Of course, you should also not look through. You should also not look at the sun with your eye, with your eyes with or without the telescope. But with the telescope, of course, it's even far worse. You you'll immediately go blind if you do that, unless you have proper solar filters. So, I just wanted to say that um, aside from the safety issues and things like that, uh, this is uh, of course. Um, people think that this is something that happens once in a million years. It's not. It's something, uh, an, a total eclipse or an eclipse of any kind. It happens once every 18 months or so. Uh, it's just a matter of um, how often it's in one place, you know, at any one time. So um, the frequency that it, that it happens is, let me see. For example, uh, I think it's 18 years, 18 and a third year, something like that. Uh, the, the, the trick is is that the, the, the eclipse will happen in a different place. For example, this kind of total eclipse happened over Europe, I think, uh, about 18 and a half or so years ago, so something like that. But in any case, um, the, what makes this particular eclipse um, especially um, fascinating for us here in the United States is that this is the first eclipse that spanned across the country in I don't know over a hundred years um, so it's gonna start off in Oregon it's gonna go south southeast traveling southeast all the way to South Carolina so literally uh, millions of people are gonna be in, in the path but in addition and these are the times by the way um, so if, if first of all, if you're if you're intending to travel to the the path of the totality, um, this is for you. Um, so starting in Oregon, it's going to be in the morning, and ending in in uh, South Carolina, it's going to be in the afternoon. So here's the times and the channels that you'll be able to see local channels that you might be able to catch it on NASA NASA TV on on on. Uh, on, the, on your computer, we're also be covering it. They'll be, they'll be actually tracking the solar eclipse, so that you'll be able to see a totality on your computer screen uh, for like the entire period, because they're going to be tracking it. They're using weather balloons and things like this to uh, to uh, do that sort of thing. But in any case, um, I, you know, first of all, I want to dispel all the uh, wushu nonsense stuff. Okay, this is this is a a unique scientific uh, opportunity for a lot of people. Um, you know, throw throw away your end, end times nonsense. It's it's uh, it's a fascinating thing. For those of you in totality, you're gonna find that uh, even the the animals and the insects are going to respond to the darkness. You might hear crickets coming out. You know, during totality, you might hear things of that nature. Uh, some of the songbirds that are out during the summer might stop singing and things like this and then they might start singing again as if it was morning but uh, things like that those are those are the unique things now for those of you who are not in totality of course like me um, you can extrapolate the times by drawing a um, I, don't, I don't know how to show this let me just maximize this if you if you extra you can extrapolate the timing by drawing a perpendicular line through your, your nearest uh, um, area to the line of the totality uh, path. So for me, for example, my closest time they have here, uh, Charleston, South Carolina, at 2.47 p.m. is going to be the totality time for them. But if I draw a perpendicular line passing through New Jersey, uh, approximately, you know, there's give or take five or ten minutes, you know, uh, depending. But uh, basically, I can extrapolate that it's going to be about the same time for me that I'm going to get my maximum. And, but actually, I, I used NASA's eye software to give me a closer time. For me, um, it's going to begin at about 123 
the peak is going to be about 245. So you can see how close that timing is to Charleston, uh, South Carolina, is 247. So it's approximately that. So if you draw a perpendicular line, for those of you who are not traveling to the totality area, uh, you can basically draw a, a line through perpendicular, you know, 90 degrees to, to the line, and you can get your approximate timing to, to watch this. So, um, so just want to remind you that uh, not to look at the sun directly without these. Um, I don't know how well it's going to show up. I know I got a, I got a small image on my the bottom corner, right corner of my of your screen. But these are the sun catchers. These are the solar eclipse glasses that I'll be using to look at directly. <clears throat> Let me just make sure I showed that. I don't want to. Okay, so I'm not sure if you've seen the whole thing. Uh, these are officially ISO approved. They got. You know, I didn't open them up. Why? Well, I had another package opened up that I, I gave to some uh, uh, family member, but. Uh, on the inside, you have the ISO uh, stamp on it and, and the uh, um, the number that, that states that it complies with the regulations and all that stuff. Do not attempt to use things like basic sunglasses to look at the sun. You will damage your eyes. And of course, if you are new at projecting the sun with your telescope, if you have a telescope or if you intend to go buy one, I know I have one YouTube new subscriber who uh, asked me about projecting the sun and he's going to buy a little junky telescope in order to do so. Uh, please be sure that you do not let anyone and yourself look through that eyepiece while you're projecting the sun. Um, also, in order to, uh, this by the way is a full aperture solar filter for, for, the, for the front of the telescope, which does allow you to look through the scope. If you buy one of those. Um, also, to align the, the telescope with the sun, you use the shadow method. Okay, so if you're going to get a telescope, even if it, even if it's a cheap one, it doesn't matter. Um, you align if, if you're going to use binoculars, if you're going to use a spotting scope, it doesn't matter. You align it up by using the shadow method. So you generally point the telescope towards the sun with the caps on, <coughs> and uh, get the silhouette so you're, you're, that you're lined up the way I'm doing it here. <coughs> These are the caps, excuse me one second, <coughs> on the objective and that's the lens. So, and there it is without the cap on. So you can see I'm lining up the telescope with, with, the, with the sun by, by using the shadow method. Okay, um, and remember if you have a viewfinder that's removable, just remove it. If not, put the caps on, on the, the front and back and uh, make sure that nobody looks through the eyepiece. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was, okay, well here, I'll give you the times again here. You can take this, copy this down. I forgot where I got this from, to tell you the truth. I just got it and I forgot where I got it from. but. Um, Another public service announcement I'd like to make. I mean, I'm in New Jersey, so I'm not going to be worried about this. We have, we have um, here in New Jersey. I'm in the Shore area. I guess you probably a lot of you already know that by now. I don't. That's no secret. Uh, so we have summertime people coming here anyway. Um, so I'm kind of used to the, the entrance of, uh, tourists, so to speak, to go to certain beaches that are around me. But this is going to be a unique situation for anyone living in the states of totality um, because there's going to be a lot of traffic so uh, there's going to be people traveling to see the eclipse in its totality coming from all over the country um, this is what makes this particular eclipse unique to us here in the United States because this is probably going to be the singular eclipse that is going to be most viewed. Not just because that it's going clear across the United States from, 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 uh, uh, from northwest to southeast so that 
if even if you didn't get in your car and drive anywhere, you you get some portion of the eclipse, and some people are in the totality. But because there are a lot of people um, excited enough to get in their car and go ahead and find a place, maybe, maybe you live just outside the totality range, and you only have an hour drive to get into the totality. But there are other people who are literally driving hundreds of miles to get into the totality path. So I I urge you to you know be polite to each other the, the you know there are there are people out there that uh, um, I, there are drivers out there um, that may not even be interested in the eclipse that are that are you know road rage drivers and things like that so I, I, I um, beg you to across the country to be um, specifically more patient with with uh, well, let's face it. Let's be, be more patient with the assholes out there. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, let's face it, there are assholes out there. Um, but uh, um, you know, be, be more patient. You know, um, and also there are you know, I mean, everybody makes mistakes. You know, even when I'm driving, sometimes I I, I, I slip and I, I don't see something and I you know nearly cause accident. You know, so be more patient with people. Um, this is a, again, it's it's a unique. Uh, opportunity to, to, to do something for citizens, regular citizens to do some science. Um, um, but, uh, you know, the highways and, and, and the travel areas and the hotels are already booked for, for the entire length of the totality. There are people in some of these states that have a population less than that of the people that are going to be coming in to see the eclipse. So, um, patience. Um, you know, it's, uh, that's that's basically all I can say. I I, I just can, I just want to. Uh, um, I empathize. I empathize with those states that are going to have that influx. Uh, basically, we're going to have an outflux here in New Jersey because the people are going to be driving south uh, to see the total total eclipse uh, or to get into a closer. And who knows? I mean, there may be people coming from north of me driving through New Jersey to go south enough to see the eclipse so maybe I'll have some problems with the with the traffic as well I don't know I'm not sure I myself for all you locals out there who might be watching this video yes I'll be in the backyard with my telescope um, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing but uh, um, I'm uh, dusting off the tripod <laughs> Let me just turn on some light here. So I'm going to be uh, dusting off. This is the telescope tripod. Let's dust it off a little bit. Get it ready for tomorrow. You know, the telescope is going to be coming out tonight out of the closet. So. Um, I'll be using the telescope, of course, to be projecting the sun, as you already know. But um, so, just to make sure that I did my job in trying to get my YouTube subscribers to be safe, never look directly at the sun through your telescope or its finder scope, even for an instant, without professionally made solar filter that completely covers the front of the instrument or permanent eye damage could result. And I'm going to emphasize, if you look through a telescope at the sun without any protection, permanent eye damage will result. I can light a cigarette off the end of that eyepiece. Not that I smoke anymore, but I could do that. All right? Um, and of course, don't look at the sun directly, even with your naked eye, um, because you could also cause eye damage. Remember, there's a, there's a lens in your eye it's a it's a you know it's a biological lens um, that will focus the the, um, um, the the sun onto your retina and you will do permanent damage to your retina um, but of course putting a telescope in front of that is it's you know for those of you as kids used to be malicious uh, ant burners with magnifying glasses uh, you know what I'm talking about so uh, and and this uh, this this is this lens on any telescope, even a cheap one, okay, is is not just a simple magnifying glass that you buy in the dollar store. This is a specifically designed lens for telescopes that is 
uses two different kinds of glass. It's an achromatic lens. As a matter of fact, you know, I have I have one for for a sixty millimeter telescope in the, in a box here. I should have showed you that. Maybe I'll make another video and show you that. But uh, this lens is specifically designed to carefully focus all of the frequencies of light in, into a, a, a nice image. Um, you won't get the rainbow effect. So this is not just any lens. It's not just any magnifying glass. It's a professionally designed mag magnifying glass, and it's the same as cameras. It's a, a, a you know to to get the perfect color and all that stuff. Um, and of course, the, the, the focal length of any magnifying glass, any convex lens, um, is determined by the thickness and the, and the curvature. So the focal length of this particular, my telescope, is 910 millimeters, or just around 3 feet-ish. So, you know, the front of the telescope is where my mouse is, and the focus point is where these uh, eyepieces are. So. That's a very long focal length. If you take a dollar store magnifying glass, you'll notice that the focal length of those things, uh, for example, this little guy right here, you know, <coughs> you know, the focal length of this thing is probably um, I can focus the the light on my hand. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Is about eight inches or six inches or something like that. So. Few, uh, a few uh, centimeters, a couple, you know, but uh, compare that to <coughs> compare that to um, compare that that distance to you know three feet. But uh, and this is just a cheap lens. You could probably use it to project the sun, but so be safe, be scientific. Um, naturally, you want to. Um, like myself, if you want to, you know, enjoy this with your family and kids and stuff, stuff like that, make sure that they understand the dangers of looking at the sun. Uh, try and get them their solar filter glasses so that they can look at the sun. When you look through these things, you're going to see the real size of the sun is actually a tiny little ball, tiny little thing. But um, only there is only one time that you can look directly at the sun when the totality occurs. Um, going back to that image of the timing. As you can see, for most places, totality only lasts a matter of minutes, sometimes even less. Um, so what you want to do is you want to be careful. Um, it is spectacular. And I've never seen one in, you know, in real in re in real life. I've never se I've only seen the corona uh, on video, on on pictures on the computer, things like that. Um, I've never seen one in real life, and I'm not going to be able to chance to see one this time either. But if you go into the totality path, or if you're already in the totality path, you're going to want to see this. It's spectacular. So. There is a safe time to take off your solar glasses. There is a safe time. That is at the point of totality. You can remove your solar filter glasses. Um, in fact, you won't be able to see it without them, with them on. So, um, but be aware that the totality is only going to last for a couple of minutes. So you want to be ready with the glasses and ready to look away the second that the the uh, the moon uncovers the edge of the sun. So again, with these timings here, with this sort of schedule here, um, you can see that, uh, for example, in South Carolina, I'm going to I'm going to use the South Carolina um, one because that's the closest. That's the the Eastern time for me. Uh, totality begins at 2:41. So at 2:41, if I was in South Carolina, I could remove my eclipse glasses and it's gonna last longer in South Carolina than it's gonna last in some other places but I better be ready to put them back on or look away from the Sun or both by 244 for people in Oregon on the other hand they have a little less time it looks like about two minutes and there's no seconds here so uh, I couldn't tell you the exact 
seconds. But uh, essentially, um, at the beginning of this thing, it looks like you're going to have a little less time. And in fact, in Idaho Falls, Indiana, it looks like uh, you have less than two minutes. It looks like a minute. So, you know, but the corona is the atmosphere of the sun that is visible during a total eclipse. And again, I've never seen it in person. I've only seen it, of course, on videos and photographs and a thousand times. But to see it in person would be would be a spectacular thing for me to see. And, and you don't want to miss that if you're going to be in the totality range. But I do want you to be safe. I don't want you to damage your eyes. So I don't know what else to say. Um, I'm getting prepared. I'm going to be pulling out my telescope out of the closet. The, the tripod is already behind me. You saw me dusting it off of it. Um, I'm going to be pulling out the, tri uh, the telescope uh, tonight to get it ready for tomorrow. Uh, perhaps pulling out the table and everything that I'm going to use. And uh, enjoy the eclipse. Be safe. And uh, let me give you that map one more time. There you go. If you wanted to take a look at that. Um, take a look at your local weather um, according to the weather here um, the AccuWeather forecast for here this is where I got this map from um, it's going to be mostly sunny here so I'm hoping for a good day and projecting the Sun so thank you for watching and uh, just be safe now I'm gonna find a way to stop this video <laughs> thank you for watching Thank you. Oh, before I go, I want to thank there's some new subscribers. Um, I want to thank you for that. Um, I uh, noticed that my subscriptions have been going up recently, within the last few days, since I've been putting up uh, some of these uh, eclipse videos and, and other chess videos and things like that. So I want to thank you for that. Be safe. Be, be kind to drivers out there. Um, there's going to be some tensions for people tra traveling towards the eclipse path, for those of you who live in the eclipse path, again, please be patient. You know, an extra grain of patience, an extra tablespoon of, of kindness uh, to these people who are trying to see something spectacular. And uh, enjoy. Thank you.